AGI Greens and BetterHelp. They showed that AGI Greens and BetterHelp haven't spent a nickel on any traditional advertising. It's all been podcasting mm -hmm. and both now are billion dollar companies. He said, Scott, if we were owned privately here, we'd make more money than we could ever dream about. When you're only generating $5 million, you're not big. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was in the heyday. I'm sure that that even after I had left, that it was still making money, just like the nugget was making money, but it just wasn't making enough. enough money. I've always had this fear of failing. The double edged sword of that is it also gives me my drive. When you are afraid to fail, you won't take the chances you need to take to make the mistake. My stuff and our stuff. Yeah, it's not your cup of tea every day, but we're doing good work. As somebody who thought he was trying to do something good, it, it shocked me into paralysis because I wanted to talk about interesting things, but mm -hmm. if you do, you're going to become at times a lightning rod mm -hmm. for frustrations out there. So forget about your own ego, your own opinion. Don't get into that part of it as early as I did. I was opinion writer right from college. For a regular journalist, I'd say stay away from uh, opinioning and for the first 10 years. Sure. Why? Because you don't have a well-formed opinion until you've got some life experience. About 10 years, I've been doing a lot more work with the Anishinaabeg Nation. One of the things that culturally is about elders and, and how they, you know, that's how they storytell. That's how they move knowledge forward is through elders. They honor them. They honor them and they listen to them and you spend time around them. That's how you gain knowledge. We don't do that as white people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today is a special one. It's a doozy. <laughs> it's going to be a doozy, I can tell, because I got two firecrackers in the hot seat. If you don't know these guys, you should. And you definitely need to know about Echo, the new venture that's uh, hot off the press mm -hmm. um, right here in North Bay. Without any further ado, here is Scott Clark and Dave Dale. Howdy. Hi, Thanks Richard. for being here. Howdy. Nice <laughs> nice time. We were talking about Austin, Texas. So that was a nice time. Yeah. We're into podcasting. Yeah, yeah we are. So. Isn't that fun? Adam, we're into podcasting. Yeah. Why do people podcast? Well, we saw you doing it. So you're always <laughs> you're always at the pointy edge of the spear. So we said, if Rich is doing it, then we're going to lean into that for sure. There's a, imagine like three years ago when we first talking about this, how much growth has happened. I don't know what the statistics are officially. I have them in a binder somewhere, but it's massive, massive growth in the podcast world. Eh? There's a, there's a company out of the States called Sounds Profitable and um, huge, uh, you know, audio firm. And uh, they did a huge um, uh, survey of mainly the United States, right? But you can extrapolate here in Canada. But they were showing the numbers in podcasting and how the shift has happened. And they, use, they really, and they made it for marketers more than anything else. And they talked about the power of podcasting and, and how people are using it. And we'll use two examples. Two are, uh, I think it's AGI Greens, I think it's called, mm -hmm. and, and BetterHelp. Mm -hmm. And they, they showed that uh, AGI Greens and BetterHelp uh, haven't spent a nickel on any traditional advertising. It's all been podcasting. Mm -hmm. And both now are billion dollar companies. Yeah. Um, and you and can they have big names because I listen to a lot of podcasts huge. and it feels like everybody's sponsored by AGI yeah, Greens. Like all the guys I tend to listen to, Tim Ferriss and Lex yeah. Friedman and all these. Well, they know, yeah. they knew early on, right? Early, early adopters, they, they leaned into it when others weren't. And probably the most powerful thing in this uh um, in this research that was done was they were showing the conversion rates of podcasting. So when you have a sponsor on yours and, and you know, uh, Richard Fortan says, well, I use AGI Greens mm -hmm. every time. It's like, it's like a celebrity endorsement because people listen to your podcast, watch your podcast because they like Richard. Yeah. That's, and, and that's what happens how you grow your audience bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. So when you endorse something, the conversion rate of people actually buying that product is massive. Yeah. It's really crazy. So it's showing today you're seeing the Cokes, you're seeing McDonald's, you're seeing all of them. Now they're kind of leaning into it and say, hey, we're going to carve off a chunk of our budget now mm -hmm. and and we're going to put this into, into podcasting. So brands today are seeing the value of, uh, of, of actually advertising on it. And yeah. then... You know, Dave and I started, had this other sort of idea that how we could, you know, maybe have a local podcast 
and, and a local network that could potentially supplement um, what's happening to media today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people want to add it in, but there's like we were talking earlier, big learning curve. Uh, figuring out what uh, is something that uh, attracts uh, listeners and keeps them right. There's a, there's a lot to it, but it works. For sure, mm -hmm. if you keep doing it. If you keep doing it. Dave, how long have you been doing podcasts? Well, I've done my, I did my first one here, was that 2019? Was it 2019? That was the first ever. Dave yeah. was the first paying yeah, Jan, studio yeah. rental podcast January 28th-ish. Yeah. Yeah, and 20. you did it on purpose. Did you remember? You yeah, yeah. threw it down, you're like, let's do it. I want to be the first it. paid guy, the let's just do it. Right? Let's do it. Yeah. So Small Town Times, how many shows have you done? Well, I was just looking at the um, YouTube channel, and uh, I have 522 subscribers, <laughs> had uh, 480 podcast oh, videos I put up. Yeah. Some of them are 480. Yeah, yeah, some of them are podcasts though. Some of them are yeah. just rabbits in my yard. Where uh, you know, like the most popular one was the uh, Fisher, um, and uh, and uh, the Lynx. Uh, forget about the people talking, <laughs> right? But mm -hmm. it's. Um, the podcast, I still have that first one, yeah. and it's really kind of cool. I showed the uh, the comedians uh, uh, not too long ago. I don't think they're, uh, uh, but it was cool at the time, and it's still really a good conversation, it, yeah. and that'll be up there forever, I guess. Right? Yeah. It's been a, so it's been five years. Yeah, five, five years, years that you've been dabbling into yeah, this. dabbling and trying different things. I was at the NRCC just in the other room. I started doing those. Uh, municipal podcast out of that room it was uh, so there's been different iterations mm -hmm. what i like yeah. about it like I've, I've been checking in on what you guys are doing at echo and and it's really awesome and what's fun is though with the podcast you could really listen when you have time to consume it right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's of course we want to consume things as fast as possible if we're interested in it but sometimes we don't have a chance and i've discovered conversations with people you've had since about you know political projects in town and different things and if it wasn't for some of the interviews dave's had i don't think that information would be out there to be honest mm -hmm. or, or you know there's a real and now we see bell laid off like the whole radio station thing just got went, rid of them just yeah. got rid of them but it what is happening in media these days that like well, I was just reading some scary stories or uh, I can't remember the name of the, the company, but um, very big, very early, did lots of stuff. I think it was called Discovery Shows in the road west mm -hmm. uh, in the States. And uh, they just laid off. Uh, they got bought out and they got laid off. And every one of the podcasts, every one of the shows, the documentaries they did. Yeah. There was uh, one legal issue f uh, they didn't want to have to bother with. They, they just deleted them all. Yeah. They're all gone. Hmm. Isn't that People something? worked there for eight years doing stuff, and it's gone. Nuggets archives gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can find digital stuff, and and you can have access to it, um, but uh, they don't have the uh, the original photos or anything. Yeah. So things are disappearing uh, digitally um, as well. And the, and but there's no more regional news. Well, that's right? the problem. It, yeah. Like, they, and this is the void that I'm seeing is being filled so eloquently through podcasting and through what you guys are doing and mm -hmm. the concept of echo from as far as I could understand it is that there is a big problem mm -hmm. if we don't have a way to know what's happening in our own neighborhood because you have you know of course national shows and of course American influence big business I mean there's all sorts of that but do we know what's going on right here next door I uh, you know I had a conversation with I'm trying to think who the publisher was at the time had the office upstairs while well, the publisher had the office upstairs at the nugget i'm trying to think who it was he was he liked to golf a lot he's an interesting dan guy dan johnson or <laughs> dan johnson it? yeah yeah dan johnson great guy i met him many different times and i remember dropping him off a coffee one day and i'm i'm still in radio at the time i drop him off a coffee one day and just to just to have a chat and he had just in a big round of layoffs there was a big round of layoffs I brought him a coffee and i said ah oh, i must suck like, that's got to be the worst to do that. And he says it is. It is the worst. He said, Scott, he said, if we were if we were owned privately here, we'd make more money than we could ever dream about. Because we're a corporate entity and we have to live by those rules, mm -hmm. we're not making enough money for them. 
Mm -hmm. So what happened? Because they take the money out. Right. And so bring it to the headquarters. I'll use my, my example with, before I left uh, radio broadcasting. And I was a morning show host at Rogers. Before Rogers, it was, I was it started as Mid Canada. It moved to Telemedia. There was there was all these iterations. How many years did you do that? Um, it was seventeen years here. I did, and I had other years before I got here. Uh, it was quick, quick hops, and I was only planning to be here for a year. So when Peter McEwen really? was the morning show host, then he got a TV gig in Ottawa. Yeah, and he went to Ottawa, and he was a big deal at that time. He was like Bob Wood, right? Yeah. And then they brought me in to fill uh, Peter's shoes. And then it was within a year, he came back again. It was like, I was mortified. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be fired for sure. He, and then I was Peter's competition. Um, but at that time, in our heyday, yeah. we had 40-something staff at Rogers. Mm -hmm. And I remember they had said that they wrote a check to Rogers Corporate for $5 million. Mm -hmm. Like So $5 million left. And so that was pretty profitable, right? Mm -hmm. But think about it. Rogers is a massive company. Five million dollars. Like Ted Rogers visited one time when we opened up our studios, he flew in on a private jet, right? On the jet, I, w I never saw inside, but a couple of people did. There was a desk in there and he had like a, an assistant at a desk and they had like a fax machine or whatever. They just had things and he had corporate papers. And so when you have a, fl a private jet, and this is how long ago it was, because when he landed uh, and he was coming down from the airport and he was heading over to the studios, he saw the Blockbuster. Remember Blockbuster user, used to be at the Century Center Plaza? Crazy. And he goes, how come we don't have a Rogers video store here? Mm -hmm. And then there's a person that walked around and just took notes. Yeah. Took a note. Yeah. We got to get a Rogers video store here. <laughs> Thank God they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that was almost, but that's how long ago it was. Yeah. But when, when you're only generating $5 million, mm -hmm. you're not, mm -hmm. you're not big. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was in the heyday. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that that even after I had left, that it was still making money, just like the nugget was making money, but it just wasn't making enough, enough money. Yeah. So because all these huge corporations own them, yeah. they can just like we're just now today. They they do the morning show out of Toronto and they mm -hmm. they pump it in. And, you know, and I feel bad for all our colleagues that have really given their life. Mm -hmm. They loved it. Right. Yeah. I loved it. You loved it too, right? Yeah. And it just changed. Yeah. yeah. But there is a void. Yeah, yeah. definitely there's a void that, and you know, how it happened. And I, I, I witnessed it as a, a union president and uh, the different uh, iterations and corporations that bought us and mm -hmm. threw bodies out the window. And I know how they did it and why. Uh, they, you know, we lay off all our uh, people that do pagination and advertising, but you'll just, You'll use our service in Barry, where we're going to have a, mm -hmm. a graphics uh, place of excellence, and we, you, mm. you won't save any money because you're going to pay us instead. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to have uh, lower uh, quality people, and it won't be people that were hired from your community. Yeah. And that was the uh, I'll, I'll, I always say it: the Nuggets' power was the amount of people it employed, because every one of those people had families, and every those families had relatives and they are all connected to the nugget. And that's where we got mm -hmm. our news tips. That's where we had our, our yeah. solid uh, advertising base. Everybody was connected. Everybody knew somebody. Mm -hmm. But once you lose the people, then that all falls apart. It, it all falls apart. And yeah. we saw, and, and how uh, Dave and I got together, it was only like a little over a year ago. So I'd, I'd known Dave Dale for mm -hmm. like, hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. When you see him at the Twigs or something. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but it, he had he had done uh, an article, uh, um, a column. Is that what you call it? Like columns. Column? Mm -hmm. Columns. <laughs> a series call? of columns. Series of columns. <laughs> yeah. You know his weekly column, and he did a he did a piece on the mayor, mm -hmm. uh, and or sorry, not the mayor. He's the mayor now. But uh, yeah. when Peter Chirico was running, and yeah. it was about um, you know the mayor not getting along with his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a dust up when yeah. he when he did that. There was like some really upset people right mm -hmm. and i really felt for dave because i i love reading dave's columns i've loved over the years you know not being in them because mm -hmm. it could be good or bad if you're in it right but mm -hmm. but it really spoke to the heart of different stories and it put context to all the big stories that were in the nugget mm -hmm. and on radio and in tv and it sort of tied everything together and i loved it mm -hmm. and then i i said hey I wrote him an email. I said, Dave, I'd love to go out and buy you coffee. We can have lunch. I'll, I'll pay. I said, I've always been intimidated by journalists. I said, so I hope you don't mind. And, and he was like, yeah, let's, let's go out. And then that's when I said, I, I watched his podcast. I love yeah. what he was doing. And, yeah. and I said, 
you know, I'd love to be involved. And then we, then this sort of idea, it, it really sprung at that table, right? Well, right outside the, uh, uh, afterwards, echo. we're talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for Echo, yeah. yeah. For Echo. We were outside Casey's and you said, uh, I was thinking about changing my boardroom into a, a podcast studio. And I was like, do it. Let's do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody coming into the boardroom at COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and even today, I don't know how many people come into your studio. It's it's more we go to them or yeah. you do Zoom. Yeah. But even if they came into the studio, it's kind of cool, right? Yeah. You come in here and go, hey, this yeah, is kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, you know. So yeah. the idea was this. Yeah. It's like, you know, our friends, our colleagues, and the industry that we we love uh, is is getting kind of decimated. Now, if you live in Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, you have no idea what's going on mm-hmm. because you still have a newspaper, probably yeah. a couple of them. Mm-hmm. You still have radio. You still have TV. You, you got it all. Mm-hmm. It's not changing in those markets. You actually have more content than you've ever had. Yeah. In Toronto, you, there's more TV stations sure. than they've ever had 24 hours mm-hmm. and stuff, right? But in these markets, it's... Way the, less way less yeah well uh, rogers the rogers radio station doesn't have a newsroom yeah right um i don't know how many would be in vista It'd probably be like two people maybe you know yeah. um Kojigo has maybe three yeah. definitely two maybe three like the nugget what two two and a half two and a half mm-hmm. like and, and you're started. yeah and you're a heyday how many how many reporters would be in the newsroom Oh, we had at least 23 managers and reporters when I got there in 2000. So wow. that was the compliment, about, about 22. Could you, like... Yeah, it's a big change. So it was like, wait a second, for the, the people that are in these industries and, and doing good work, and they just literally don't have the resources or time in a day to do all the things that need to be done, mm-hmm. how could we sort of say, hey, here's what they're doing, here's what they're reporting on, what if we do long form interviews about some of the topics that they're talking talking about and we don't want to compete against them where the industries were designed that way like in my day it was like okay we're gonna we had like 10 people at rogers in our newsroom we're, we're gonna do the story better faster quicker that's how we could beat the nugget because they publish once a day and we could put it on yeah. whenever we whenever we wanted right so there was always this competition you never shared mm-hmm. right but what if we shared mm-hmm. what if we um talk about you know uh stew campaign and the, and the the great reporting he's doing at city hall yeah what if we yeah. talk about you know greg esterbrooks and what he's doing over here at the nugget and yeah. what koja is doing and, and then we'll do a longer form interview and come in and talk to us about that story and yeah. let's get deeper into that yeah. story yeah and because the diversity of the type of media we're also consuming is really all over the place it from is tiktok from 12 seconds on tiktok to 12 yeah. hours on a podcast mm-hmm. or like yeah. there's long podcasts right and there's some people that don't, just don't get it right mm-hmm. they're like three hour a two hour conversation with you know whoever yeah. what i would never do that but then other people really do enjoy spending it really is a buffet out there right now and w- like what we're doing is providing s- what could lead or be supplemental uh coverage in another form that a lot of uh, media platforms don't have the time or resources to do. Yeah. And this is what we want to do as part of, of a business model. So we could provide the stuff. And Bay to Day is a really excellent partner with this. Uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, they they get it. Um, they get stories out of the podcast interviews that we do. Um, they, then they make a story out of it using that as a video that they didn't do, but it's on their website where they get the eyeball retention. Yeah. Right. And then... With the newsletter, of course, uh, whoever's doing the best stuff, I'll, I'll uh, link in and try to get more eyeballs for them because they, they're not on Facebook mm-hmm. anymore right? mm-hmm. or they, they've lost social leverage. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually well-timed for what their needs are and what we want to do, mm-hmm. right, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeff Elgy, if anybody follows Jeff Elgy, he's the, the president, the owner, the founder of Village Media, Bay Today, basically. He's a brilliant guy. Yeah. Reach out to him right away. He gets it. Yeah. He he's he's all about the share economy and really? and, and how that all works. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. He was a marketing guy. He started as a marketing guy, had a really powerful agency in Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. Ended up selling into a firm in Toronto. Then he he kept his village media, or yeah. it was Sue Today. Yeah. And Sue Today's massive. In yeah. Sault Ste. Marie, it's the it number is. one and has been for many years news outlet. And I remember going there for the first time. This is before everything's happened in traditional media. And he had it was some event I was at, 
but he had people on computers like mm -hmm. at the front you know posting stories at the event we were at some big yeah. chamber thing or something yeah. right yeah. and i'm like dang this guy's on it this guy's on it he's done well and so he brought that to other communities yeah but the, but the other piece is really smart about him right is um is he created a software product right and so Jeff and I haven't talked about this. This is what I surmise, right? Is he's so smart, he's created a software product that that's how you do uh, Bay Today, Sue Today, Aurelia Today, all the different todays he has. Mm -hmm. He has this software product that that's how you do local, you plug all your information, this is how it comes on the web here. Mm -hmm. I went, so this is, so he's shown that this works across the province and he has other people yeah. that use the software. And I, I go, that's brilliant. He's just a brilliant guy. Yeah, so cool. Mm -hmm. So these days, who are you listening to in podcasts that are like uh, really uh, surprising you? Or, well, or what are you doing? There? My mainstays uh, have actually stayed very similar. Um, Lex Friedman. Yeah. Right? I like Isn't he stuff. amazing? Yeah, I, he's just... <laughs> He's a cool dude. He's unassuming, very smart, and he has smart guests. And that's what good I'm looking questions. for. I'm looking for good guests yes. where uh, the interviewer doesn't get in the way of that person. Yeah. Providing. No, it helps when it's Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos <laughs> just, did, yeah. just did his first long form with, oh, with Lex. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. Yeah, it was great. Um, I actually get something still out of Joe Rogan. Um, he yeah. has some interesting oh, guests. Amazing. Right? The king. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's in the uh, league of his own. And I, I really, really enjoy how everybody either hates or loves him and, sure. and that, that whole division. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think he knows anything about Canada and has no right to talk about <laughs> right. politics here. Yeah. Um, Joe, like, come on, stop it. Or at least <laughs> get informed. But. I, I don't care. Like, yeah. go ahead, keep yeah. keep keep saying stuff and have you know yeah. whatever, because uh, you're doing the, a greater good with all the other stuff I can put up with. Yeah, yeah. And I think and I hope that's what people think about my stuff and our stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not your cup of tea every day, but we're doing good work. Yeah. And it's it, and it's valuable, right? For sure. Right. Um, who else? I love Bo, Bo of the Fifth Column. Uh, he gives me my. Uh, he, uh, and Peter Zion, uh, yeah. uh, the uh, geopolitical sort of picture. Yeah. Uh, this uh, bow of uh, the fifth column there. He he's just straight up uh, redneck looking guy that uh, is very left left. So far yeah. left, he's almost right. Um, but uh, <laughs> very progressive minded. But he just gives the goods and explains things and tries to let people grow from what he's saying. So I, I really like those guys. They give me a, a sort of a foundation. Most days, yeah, yeah. Um, and but, there's there's others, uh, yeah. lots. Who were you listening there's, to? I, I like Lex a lot. Like in terms of interview style, it, I think he's incredible at finding the balance of inserting his brilliance and intelligence and just being quiet and listening. Mm. Yeah. The other one that and genuine a, passion. Yeah. For yeah, the truth, no, he's and amazing. Information. Yeah. yeah. And I, anybody who's doing anything at the scale he's doing, and we know even at a small scale, like you get hate. You know, I did a I did a, a post a year ago. I was on my way to South by Southwest, and I stopped by an ashram of a yogi, and I did a, a story on it because I, I was blown away how amazing this place was. It was in Tennessee, just outside Nashville. And somebody uh, wrote, you know, really expressed their strong discontent with me sharing about this this person and really hated right and it i froze i didn't podcast i didn't share anything after that because it really made me reflect on how something that i thought was innocent and actually a good thing to share mm -hmm. could be interpreted in such a way by somebody in north bay who had, clearly had mental health issues based on how he was communicating with me and i of course i just had to block and move on but in my psyche as yeah. somebody who thought he was trying to do something good it, it shocked me into paralysis of having to am, am i ready to deal with because i wanted to talk about interesting things but mm -hmm. if you do you're going to become at times a lightning rod mm -hmm. for um frustrations out there mm -hmm. so if dave chooses to write an article about a politician Mm -hmm. You know, there's consequences and there's mm -hmm. been consequences, I'm sure, for Dave personally, that you have to be willing to, I mean, I, I don't know, but I mean, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to, to 
yeah, own it, that and to, to be okay for. with what you signed up for. But as, as a producer, as somebody who's trying to put his voice out there, it really made me reflect on why I'm doing what I'm doing, who is it for, and what happens when you mm. hurt somebody or you piss somebody off. Or but it's, you, not, it's not easy, right? Like, and, and Dave has taught me a ton. And, and I would say every week, almost every day, I'm asking him a question, right? And so let me go back to something we talked about earlier when Dave wrote that column about mm -hmm. Peter Chirico when he was running, running the mayor. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. it, at first glance, it's like, why would you take something so silly? Like, mm -hmm. you know, someone running for council and he's not getting along with mm -hmm. his neighbor and hasn't mm -hmm. for a long time, right? Why would you do that? That mm -hmm. sounds kind of like you're poking him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, you have to, he said, you have to look at the full picture. Like at the time, and, and please correct me if I'm not going to tell the story, right? You probably will. Yeah. <laughs> I asked him and he said, look, Scott, I was trying to get a, uh, just an interview with all the different people that are running, right? Because that's, that's my job. I'm a mm -hmm. journalist and I, mm -hmm. I, you have to get all their perspectives and you, you put it out. And for whatever reason, uh, Peter's campaign wouldn't make that happen. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't provide the opportunity for Peter to, to do an interview. Mm -hmm. So he needs to do a story mm -hmm. about this person running. And if he was successful in becoming the mayor, what, what is it like if someone uh, can't resolve issues with their neighbor mm -hmm. who's going to have when a job where you have to constantly come. resolve issues with people? Yeah. And, and when, you, when you put that and you framed it for me, I went, oh, that's a really interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. And it all made, made a lot of sense about, you know, uh, why the article was done, why that had happened. Now, I have said since. There's been one or two times where Dave has written something or said a little line ago, I don't get that joke. Mm. It was because Dave was doing a, an inside joke to mm -hmm. say, don't poke the me. mayor because the mayor texts me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I asked what he do. He goes, well, it's just poking him. I go, well, stop poking. No yeah. poking. Yeah. Let's not poke the mayor. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, it's interesting though, like, like that whole piece that you're talking about, mm -hmm. there is a constant dance. I, I was mm -hmm. never a journalist. I was a broadcaster, but not mm -hmm. a journalist. And I was like in your shoes where, you know, my job was to be liked and to yeah. have as many listeners as possible sure. and to, to have a voice to everybody else. Dave is very different as a journalist yeah. and a columnist, right? Yeah. Like you have to, you have to get to the core of the issue. So it's have an opinion, have an opinion, help so, people express their opinion. Show people that you can express an opinion and yeah. show them how to go about it and not totally, totally get erased. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, when, when you do that, when you give an opinion, there will be someone who's, Disagrees. you know, and I think when I had that first lunch with Dave and I, uh, and I was like, I, I want to support you, Dave. Like, I know you're taking a lot of heat here. How can I support you? Right. And now that we're working together. Um, there was, we were on location at the home show and we yeah. did, uh, echo from there. And, uh, there was a woman who came up and said, Oh, I love what you guys are doing. You need to have more politicians on and you need to hold them accountable and you need yeah. to, you know, so there, there is a, there's an appetite for people that, that they want you to have people on and skewer them. Mm. And it's like, that's only going to work for a week. Yeah. Then no one's going to come on and talk to us. Right. Yeah. You have to have like public, you have to be able to have a conversation like this. Yeah, it, it, it's how you go about it. And I think my uh, theory on it is to just provide a, a place, an opportunity for somebody to explain themselves and to uh, have a longer conversation, uh, an opportunity to go into the different details and nuances that they can't in a five second uh, sound bite or they can't in a, uh, at their council chambers. Um, and that's enough. They'll, they'll paint themselves in the corner or they'll skewer themselves by just going on the record with their statements. If they're, or they'll be able to explain themselves so they'll have some people say, oh, that's what they're thinking. Couldn't tell, right? But now I think, right? And then even with uh, like Sarah Inch and uh, Jamie Lowry, uh, mm -hmm. one of the recent, podcast i had people saying oh okay you know um i can see a little bit more of what those individuals are where they're coming from yeah. they still might not agree but 
they appreciate the opportunity to see them in uh, another light. Well, that's just it. And that's what the local, like all politics are local. Was it Churchill that said that or something? Like at the end of the day, all politics are local. But as the local gets so far from where the news is coming in, you know. Oh, Bill Antler was an even mm. better example. Um, uh, Scott was asking, um, I listened to what he said. I, I don't really, I'm not too sure about this. I said, listen, man, that's gold. That's that's the root. That's the, that's the the golden part of community journalism. Given somebody like Bill Antler, uh, Antler who's a passionate, uh, has a, uh, some history, has something to say, even if you don't agree with him, or you, you, there's parts of what he's saying aren't right. Having uh, the common guy to have a chance to, to speak mm. his truth to power mm-hmm. is the most valuable thing in the world mm-hmm. when it comes yeah. to journalism. Yeah, it wasn't that Bill was saying anything like, not correct yeah. but often especially i always find like it, these counselors any level of politics it's way more complicated than we think yeah. right it, to, to oh, move yeah. anything through right yeah. and bill kind of simplified it a bit and said what, what if we do this right and it, this is only common sense and to me watching it's like i know i get you but there's there's 30 things that we don't know, <laughs> and they're really, really complicated. So at the home show, I was talking to people about the Antler uh, uh, presentation that was coming up, but most of it was in the interview. Um, and there are people that are dead set against the power, people in power. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just call that. People in power, making the decisions. Hate those people, don't agree with them. No matter what. No matter what, but... They, they said, uh, we don't, I don't agree with Antler, even though it went against mm. the people in power and hmm. where they're going, right? Mm. So it gives people like Antler a chance to tell their story, That's but funny. it also gives other people a chance to weigh the pros and cons and everything yeah. and make a decision for themselves. Yeah. I love that part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's amazing. What would you tell, what's the best advice you would give yourself at 20 years old? You get to go back in time, you Mm. see yourself, you're 20 years old, Dave. What is the advice you give yourself knowing you're going into media? I'm talking to Dave, the journalist, but also what would you tell yourself today or what would you tell a 20 year old that's watching who's at Canada? Better haircut, shave on a regular basis. Well, he did it. He got the haircut. I know he did. I got the haircut for him. Thank <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I sent him to Vita Salon. He goes, I'm not going to Vita Salon. Yes, You've you been are. to Vita Salon? No, nice. no. Well, they give you like a scalp yeah. massage. They wash yeah. your I've hair. I've never had a scalp massage. Oh. And he so came, when he came back, I, he went, oh, oh yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. My, my bad haircuts <laughs> got me good. a little bump in my allowance. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. But what would you tell yourself? As a, or what would you tell a young person today going into hmm. this? Well... I would say because it's an the, overwhelming world. The journalism world, mm-hmm. uh, with podcasting, is like we're here now, and I'm 20. Yeah, yeah. We're talking to a current 20 year old. You have yeah. perspective. You've gone through so many experiences being behind the scenes and working in media yeah. production, and you've done you've you've experimented with all sorts of stuff. So I'd be curious to know. What you would say to a young up and comer who's thinking like, I want to figure out what the next chapter is for media, whatever it is. Ted Mm -hmm. Rogers became Ted Rogers because he was way ahead of the curve in terms of realizing how media was going to play out. Mm-hmm. And then he created, I under, my understanding is he created the, the company to get us there. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, I would say this. Spend your first 10 years telling other people's stories mm-hmm. um, and just do as much as you possibly can. Telling other people's stories. Forget about your own ego, your own opinion. Don't get into that part of it as early as I did. I was opinion writer right from college, right? Okay. Which, which is fine because that's where I went and I, uh, that was a, a skill set that I had that others didn't have. So I filled a niche with that. Um, but for a regular journalists, I'd say stay away from uh, opinioning and for the first 10 years, for sure. Why? Because you don't have a well-formed opinion until you've got some life experience. Mm-hmm. That's true. And and, and, <laughs> and you get into this, uh, I, I see people doing it all the time. They, they feel like they need to um, um, drive the clicking with uh, by baiting people with uh, stronger opinions than are ne- mm. necessary or um, 
less f- founded than they should be, yeah. right? A straight up opinion. And, and the other thing is stay away from anybody that's yelling their opinion or uh, like the people that just can't do it uh, intellectually mm-hmm. and emotionally with mm-hmm. some type of foundation. Mm-hmm. Interview older people mm-hmm. that are centered and grounded mm-hmm. as much as possible. Can I, you do a lot of that. What is it that, that sparks you like interviewing older people? Mm-hmm. Like there's something that really lights you up. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, when I was 15, 16, I worked at an old folks home. I was the, I was the maintenance guy. I did the, the grass cutting and I helped, uh, you know, <laughs> clean out the rooms and I helped did things. And I, and on a Saturday night, I'm heading to a party. I'd stop by and play cards with the ladies. Right. And, and it was, um, the perspective, their perspective, their they're like, they, they, they just, they seem to have, um, an amusement of life. Uh, and, and, uh, they've seen it before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they have so much to share too, right? Yeah. And so I've always kept that in mind is that that's where I'm going to find uh, the wisdom, mm. right? Also, the feeling. Like I just interviewed today uh, uh, two people that uh, grew up in Nipissing Junction. They went to the school. One guy was born in the, uh, the railway station that was there. Um, they, were, they were both in their 80s and uh, they've known each other since grade, uh, grade school. Uh, they were in a one-room classroom together, right? And uh, they told told me about the pet dog that was there, Hunter, yeah. uh, a golden retriever that was would go around every half hour to every kid, and every kid would pat him on the head. It gives you around. perspective too. And, like that's and so I understand where they come from, yeah, a little bit better. And yeah. uh, every time I interview somebody, it puts me back into a a, a, a well, better founded sort of look at the world. Yeah. So, hell, if it makes me feel better. Yeah. Every time I do it, I'm going to keep doing yeah. it. Yeah. When, when you work with the Anishinaabek Nation, because in the last number of years, about 10 years, I've been doing a lot more work with the Anishinaabek Nation. One of the things that, uh, you know, culturally is, is about elders and, and how they, you know, that's how they storytell. That's how they, mm-hmm. they you know, move uh, knowledge forward is through mm-hmm. elders and, mm-hmm. and how, they, how they look at elders. And I'm like, they honor them, they honor them and they listen to them and you spend time around them. That's how you gain knowledge. We don't do that as white people. (laughs) Well, my seven years at the Union of Ontario Indians reinforced what I always thought about uh, elders, but Mm -hmm. they showed me a Mm -hmm. way to uh, be respectful and they showed me the value of them, uh, how it can be integrated into uh, uh, governance. Uh, how it can be integrated into uh, decision making, where we don't. No, we don't. Right? Not at all. And it's and it's 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 crazy. I, they're going after Biden and Trump, uh, Biden and Biden. Trump. Um, I don't know why it was Biden, <laughs> um, because of their age. Well, <laughs> they're the same age as yeah. like people that are still very valuable and, and mm-hmm. have experience. I'd be afraid to put a twenty year old in in in, in the in the mm-hmm. big house, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Age isn't, it's ageism is, is, mm. uh, is probably a rotten thing. And our yeah. society has lost a lot mm-hmm. by, so by not like valuing. preserving some of that perspective. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, no, it's a valuable to the community. Yeah, for sure yeah. it is. And, uh, I, totally I, hear you. I don't know. Yeah, that's I, cool. I don't want to be an activist what, on it. Yeah, but. yeah. So that's on the, that that's interesting. As an entrepreneur, how many years have you been in business? Like, so out of radio, we 20 talked a little years. bit. That's an accomplishment. I've been Congratulations. out of radio longer than i was in radio okay because you were in radio 17 right around the same well 17 here 17 and then before about the same amount of time but yeah young entrepreneur walks into your office wannabe entrepreneur coming out of canada or nipissing what do you tell them is the most important skill set or attitude or perspective to have as somebody who's been able to survive in not an easy game and not an easy town mm. and not an easy market. There's been a lot of change in the last 20 years in your business. Mm-hmm. What, what would you tell them is the key? <laughs> I, a key. Uh, have this. I don't know if I'm smart enough to be an elder to share something like that. But but for me, what would I tell my twenty years? That's what would I tell you've my? You've learned a few. Are you? Come yeah. on, like no. you've learned a. I've, I have learned a lot, and, and it's. Um, I think. Don't be afraid to fail, is probably the number one thing. There was a, a time in my life, and I think my career in radio finished here, and probably thank God because. 
<laughs> well, I should be retired by now um, if I if I stayed in radio. Mm-hmm. But You'd be retired looking for work. There was all I've always had this fear of failing, right? And but the 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 double edged sword of that is it, it also gives me my drive mm. because I don't want to fail. Mm-hmm. But when you are afraid to fail, you won't take the chances you need to take to make the mistake, mm-hmm. right? And so all the all the people that come into our, our, our team now, we are always have that conversation about it's okay. You're, it's okay to fall down, scrape your knee, and it's going to happen. And, 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 you know, enjoy that moment. Get back up and then make it right. And even in our business, in the, on the marketing business, mm-hmm. it was, it's, I, I tell all the young people, we're going to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. We do. Everybody does. It doesn't matter your construction, whatever. We're going to make a mistake. The companies that are successful know how to make it right. Fix it. Mm-hmm. It was actually Ted Hargreave said to me. Was, are you going to say something about Ted no, Hargreaves? No, I was going to say, who's men, did, have mentor? you had any mentors that have helped you along the way or particular mentor or somebody that really helped? Ted Hargreaves, uh, former owner of BD, BDO, mm-hmm. um, he... I love that guy from the so in the in the nineties. Well got, respected, well respected, community. but a community minded yeah. guy. He he drove community projects like Heritage Festival and brought in the air show and did these large scale things and was able to. He was like a Pied Piper. He could bring people together for a common cause mm-hmm. and do great things, mm-hmm. raise money, mm-hmm. raise awareness, um, and and raise you know uh, powerful things within a community. I love that. I was, I love, and he said to me, when I got into business, he said to me, when I deal with my clients, um, and here's the deal, and I, I use this even to this day. It's like when we go in, we you, you sign a deal with clients, say, look, if you don't like what I do, you don't have to pay me. He says, but this is what I want in our relationship. He says, if, I, if I'm doing something you don't like, I want you to tell me. Hmm. If, if, if it doesn't work out, I want, allow me to fix that. And if you don't like it, you don't have to pay. Mm-hmm. And he said, Scott, in That's all the years I've been in business, no one has never paid me. Hmm. I, I did a double mm-hmm. negative there. But, but I, I yeah, understand you know? what you mean. And I've used it. And, it. and it's so true. It's about building the relationship. Yeah. The other one I'll say. Yeah. There's no perfect, right? There's iteration. Yeah. And the fail fast thing. I love that. Because it's true. Because then you can get to the right thing, but you don't know until you mm-hmm. try. And if you're too afraid to try, so I don't mean to cut you mm-hmm. off, but no, yeah, I'm just reinforcing. I mean, I it just remembered it's great advice. Another, he's become a great personal friend of mine, and but also he was a mentor, and that's Roy Slack, president of Cementation. Super, you successful. would know Roy, right? Yeah. Uh, awesome guy, and uh, <laughs> so I just have some funny stories. Like I took him to his first Barry Manilow concert, <laughs> and. <laughs> and we had a great time. <laughs> um, but uh, he said to me, and it was the time I was working with Ben Farrell at the time, mm-hmm. right? And there was there was a time when it was like, uh oh, what is going to happen with this company? Was Ben and I going to go together, or was I going to go on my own? And I was terrified to go on my own, mm-hmm. terrified mm-hmm. to to leave mm-hmm. that. You know, the the Ben had all this marketing and business experience, and I, I didn't have that same thing. I was terrified to leave. And then Roy said to me, he said about business and he said, Scott, in business, in life, whatever it happens to be, even it, he says what I do, because he's dealing with hundreds of millions of dollar client, right? Massive clients, right? He said, your values need to be aligned. If your values aren't aligned with your client and the people you work with, the relationship will never, Mm -hmm. never be the same. And I don't think Ben and I's values were the same. I'm not saying his are bad or mine are better. Different. It's just different. Yeah. People have different values. Mm-hmm. And they weren't aligned so that the clients that Ben brought in, they, were, they weren't big on me. Mm-hmm. And the clients I brought in, they weren't big on Ben. It, like, it, was like, yeah. it was like this oil and water thing that was happening, right? We couldn't figure out what that was. And then, so what happened when, when Ben and I decided to go different, different directions? Not one client left. Right. And they all supported. But I've always stuck to that, that your values have to align. Mm -hmm. And if you push, even though there's someone waving dollars at you, you push and your values don't align. I can guarantee you what it's going to burn down at some point. It was at some point every time success. 
sometimes when I the way I console myself if a project doesn't work or a relationship that I was really excited about, I, I think, well, I'm happy we didn't really succeed together. Because then when there's money on the table, it'd be even worse. Like if somebody reveals a side that you didn't quite see coming or and then you really see it once there's success mm -hmm. or money on the table, right? Because, uh, yeah, the, the character comes out. Sometimes it takes a little uh, experience to figure that you out. You have to fail. Yeah, what, but you what have to fail. What kind of values are you talking about? I don't understand. Well, just you, your values. Oh, okay. if, so if... Um, if Quick you're, buck as opposed to long game? Would that be a value, like an sure, example right. of a value? Like, like we're going to try to profit the most we can off this job as opposed to um, going for a longer term idea. Would that be an idea of a value? It, it could be. It, it's really just sent, like I think you and I have slightly different values in certain ways, but we also have different methodologies. But, but you and I are working out to understand what those laneways are like mm -hmm. in, in it. Mm -hmm. And then, but where it would be, uh, you know, as partners, you know, it, it can be, it's a lot more work, you know, working on our values together to make sure because your values are strong, my values are strong, and it could be, it could be oil and water. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing, like, I, I want Dave to, to be the content director. So he's in charge of that. That's his, that's his bailiwick. I'm going to do some of the business side over here, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a producer that does the producing side and we keep He's a young guy and we keep telling him, okay, don't, don't keep coming into our kitchen mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you do that, mm -hmm. you have to let Dave do the content. That's what yeah. he does. I'm going to do some business. He's going to do, Finding you know, the sound and being able to, you have to, to stay it. in the lane. Yeah. That's when you have different values, mm -hmm. then you can, you can work together nicely, but everybody has to stay in their lane. You see successful companies, they're That's like amazing, that, yeah. you know, when, but when they have to make decisions at, together at the same, like I'll say Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Yeah completely different values but both required to make the successful organization work absolutely because right? without the other you can't both you can't needed dance. each other yeah both needed each other and it's and it's not good or bad or yeah. it's it's just values well guys i'm so excited that you came down here i've been wanting to try to find a way to mash what i'm doing with what you're doing and i'm really inspired by what you guys are doing so keep it up mm -hmm. I think, though, I want to finish the show, because I'm sure we've been talking for our time, is talking about this show that you guys are doing together specifically. I'd like you to tell me what that is and what we can expect to see from, because you guys are doing a show together yeah, now about yeah. the news, right? Echo Essentials, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, let's hear about that, because that's where it all comes together again. And well, local. It, it, it's kind of... Well, it's a spoke in the wheel. Uh, with uh, if you look at the the newsletter as the hub, right? And uh, it's what one of the shows that we wanted to do. We originally wanted to get a couple other hosts for our ma uh, main sort of news community issue shows. It wasn't really working out, but we realized that you know we're looking for two people like ourselves. You got a left and a rightish uh, sort of not necessary right. Who's left and who's right? I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, personality wise we have uh, differing personalities but you see the world differently yeah, and, and it brings it so it, not left yeah. right necessarily politically but just we, we we got two two sort of ways to come at things yeah um and different experiences life experiences different business experiences my journalistic uh, uh path compared to uh, uh your broadcast path and like there's a lot there mm -hmm. um, but it's different so Turned out we were the right host for the show that we're wanting to do, which is community mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. right? And uh, uh, it's an it's really nice sort of uh, uh, dovetails with the uh, the North Bay with Love show with uh, sure. Lisa Boyfan. Sure. She does a lot of uh, very uh, personal interviews with people, and um, you know some of them are uh, uh, with She's great I well known people. People love listening to her. It's mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's a little softer than I, I want to be a little bit more hard hard with mm -hmm. the, the issues. Um, so that's the show we want to do is mm -hmm. eventually I'd like to see it where we have uh, a, a guest political or not come in and uh, and uh, Scott and I come at them with from different angles with different questions still being yeah. civil and still being uh, you know uh, good hosts mm -hmm. right but getting to the issue getting yeah. to the points that people want um, 
coming up with those questions that people that follow and, and like Scott's uh, perspective, yeah. they get those questions answered, and then I can ask mine, and people are thinking like... When I, I let them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're working on I'm working some, on that. I'm some, a little talky-talky. Talky. Yeah. <laughs> Nine questions. I can't relate day. to yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. I but we're, we're working it out, and it's, it's kind of cool. I think it has some momentum. We have um, Maggie Horsefield's coming in yeah. for an interview uh, on Friday. We just did... Uh, um, uh, a really kind of cool one-two punch. We had Beth mm-hmm. Hillier. Her podcast is okay. coming out. She was talking about development, and but we, we started. Bev with, is who? Pardon me. Bev is who? Just so she. Oh, knows. she's yeah. uh, the uh, chief planner at the city, right? Okay. So she came in after we interviewed uh, Liza Vandermeer from the Trout Lake Conservation Association. So it was, it was almost sort of like a. Uh, uh, two dovetail shows with an in-between. Tomorrow show is about the Anishinaabeg Nation leadership. We had two, the so Grand cool. Chief, Grand the Chief. Regional Chief from Superior, and uh, Jason Larone, the local yeah. guy that runs their uh, Lands and Resources Department. Mm-hmm. And that was like old home week for me because That's I was so like, cool. wow, right? Um, it's uh, 24 years after mm-hmm. I left the, the Union of Ontario Indians. And I got to see some of the uh, elders that are still there. They, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. met up with them at the uh, casino. Yeah. Um, the... Um, the anyway, thing I loved yeah. about what you what you said, or, or one of the things that Dave understands these issues like really deep, and I'm like right at the crust of the surface. But we had um, Liza Vandermeer in from uh, Trout Lake uh, Conservation Association. I was just fascinated by her, right, and uh, asked all these questions about you know the, the development of Trout Lake, and and I was like, okay, I really understood this. And I think in previous administrations with the municipality, we were you could never get an interview with someone like with the portfolio that Bev Hillier has. It, it had to be someone else. But this administration said, you know, they they said yeah. Bev's Bev's available, and she's brilliant. Yeah, she's super super smart woman. She came in and gave you know sort of the perspective of how buildings done, why it's done, yeah. all these things yeah. in the processes. Mm-hmm. And you go, this is what we wanted to do, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and to put it even more simply, how I said in our first podcast was, uh, the people who like me don't like Dave, <laughs> and the people who like Dave don't like me. So we you should have everybody. Yeah, we think we'll have around. everybody. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> See, that's what. That's yeah, business, baby. Yeah, that's what I'll that's tell business. them. <laughs> we'll have well, everybody. Well, I I think it's gonna work. I think it's going to work because I think there's something about triangulation too. I think seeing the world different. We don't, you know, as the world becomes more polarized, we need ways. Mm. People are hungry. I believe, I, I hope and I believe that people are looking for ways to find a, a way to have a conversation. Because mm-hmm. right now what's happening is like um, everybody is pretending the other side doesn't exist almost. Like you can become, you know, there's just more and more polarization. Mm-hmm. So can... Having two people who see the world differently come together, now everybody might be even mm-hmm. more comfortable coming to talk about a perspective, knowing that it's not going to be in line with Dave, but it might be in line with you. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's I something think to say about there's something, there. yeah. there's something there for sure. Yeah. Well, enjoy it. Have fun with it. Well, thanks, thanks for, for coming. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Richard. And, uh, it's really enjoy what you do. Uh, I've been uh, watching uh, the, the, the most recent ones are really cool. I like the life advice guy. Um, I'm mm. not sure. I can't remember his name. But the, the life advice guy. There, Frank, everybody uh, who comes here has like <laughs> the business trying to get out of it. Uh, uh, See, because I'm doing this selfishly. To be honestly, uh, to be honest, I mean, I never, I never hide it. I'm doing this selfishly because it's a great way to initiate this conversation. Mm. See, because you and I have a personal relationship. We talk pretty regularly. We check in with each other. But I, I want to talk to Scott. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because yeah, well, I, I, it's a no, good excuse to get to know the people. Because mm-hmm. everybody's got a message, a, a charity, a business, something that they want to share. Mm-hmm. But it's hard. It's hard to get the cameras to get the tech right. Mm-hmm. But if you can offer a solution and at the right time, sometimes people say, "No, I'm, it's not the right time for me." But when it is the right time, then they come back, and now you can offer value. Now you can give something back. And say, yeah, drop by the studio. We'll just flip the lights on, turn on the cameras, make sure Adam's available. And let's try to provide you a way to tell your story so that you can raise your money or talk about your business or, Mm -hmm. you know, make somebody feel good. So it's all a tool to help, but also personal branding. Mm. It is called the Joe Rogan show. It is the, you know, there's a million examples, but 
it is personal branding. So to me, if you're the right, like it is Scott Clark that I'm tuning in to listen to because I like him or don't like him Mm -hmm. because you might get as many listeners if, you know, (laughs) and that's the power of the medium Mm -hmm. that I think ain't going anywhere, you know, Mm -hmm. and who, let's make it three hours. Like I'm sure we've been talking way longer than I'm supposed yeah, I to be meeting. talking. <laughs> but but yeah, that's what but it was worth it. But, the, but it was worth it. It was worth it for us. And now we put it out there and then you, we will look back on it one day in a few years and go, oh, that was really dumb. Or that was amazing. <laughs> well, know, look what happened from it's there. It's true. And, and seeing, because uh, I have watched Dave's first podcast here. He is a different person from that first podcast and that now that i'm seeing what i after i've watched and listened to a couple of mine i'm like oh okay <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. no i see that authentic, everybody right? should should re- record themselves because yeah. when you see yourself boy and everybody reacts we do it all the time we do video production and yeah. everybody who sees themselves you know oh no oh i sound like that i look like that and of course people the joke is it takes a lot of humility to actually put yourself out there mm-hmm. yeah and it's, it's actually really hard to be authentic because when all these lights and cameras are all around you, it's like, you know, these lights and cameras are happening. Yeah. So it takes time to sort of find your voice. Yeah. And, and, but like in any art, any yeah. great photography, the yeah. best shot is that authentic shot. For sure. And it's sure. really hard to get. For and sure. that's, it took that's me two magic. years of podcasting to find my yeah, voice. Just two years to, to feel relax. comfortable. Just, yeah. just, okay. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'm not there yet. I remember the first one I did, they stopped it and go, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Be yourself. <laughs> yeah, be yourself. Yeah, be yourself. I didn't know. I had 20 years of not yeah. being myself. How do I be yeah. myself? Yeah. Well, you, well, I think what it is, you have a lot of energy. You're like me. You have a lot of energy and we want to get it out. We want to share everything. Yeah. Your brain's going a million miles an hour. But that's what I had to learn too. Like, don't cut people off. Richard. I know. Like, why are you, <laughs> you group. know, it's yeah. just listen. But, but then <laughs> I'm I so listen sorry. better too. No, but then I listen because Lex, you listen to these great interviewers and you realize it's not that they don't have anything to say. It's that they know when to give the space and when, and all of a sudden when they do say what they're, you know, you realize, oh, they're not just sitting there being quiet. Mm. There's a lot of thinking going on, and mm-hmm. it's a real art. It is an it art. It is an art. Yeah. So hey, right? let's keep painting. Let's you, you yeah, keep yeah, doing yeah. Richard presents. We'll keep doing yeah. our echo, and uh, let's uh, collaborate. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Let's do it. Adam, sorry for going so long. Sorry, Adam. That's what it is. Okay. We love you. Thanks for making it happen. Everybody, mm-hmm. check, subscribe. Go to Echo. Okay, where do I... Whoa. Where do we find you? NorthBayEcho.ca. Northbay Everywhere. <laughs> on all the platforms. All the platforms. That's a place to start. Yeah. Okay. Right? Place but to we're start. on Spotify. We're on Spreaker. We're on uh, you know, Apple. Yeah. Um, my small town times isn't yet, but it will be. Yeah. And uh, But North Bay uh, Echo Essentials podcast with Scott and I, it mm-hmm. will be. And, and you can sign up go for to the website. website I love the brand. You must have a good marketing company helping you because I love the brand. You know Tristan Godman he's, <laughs> and Kevin Hoffman. Yeah. They were the ones. You did a great job. Yeah, that's yeah. those boys. Keep They're it up. brilliant. It's the beginning. Yeah. yeah. It is the it's beginning. almost as good as the shot. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I like the shot too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye.